we've started to learn about standing waves. They look like this. Here's a string that's vibrating up and down because there's a vibration generator here. And look, the string is going up and down like a standing wave. But we can make the string vibrate with different frequencies. So this is a longer wavelength because all we see is half of a wave going up and down. And when we slow it down to slow-mo, you can actually see that up and down vibration of the string. The crests and troughs don't move across. That's why we call it a standing or stationary wave. There are different ways to vibrate this string. You can make it look different. And he's drawn some of the shapes on the board here. So this is a really long wave because you can only see half. You don't even see the other half where it goes up and also then goes down. So this is a huge wavelength. When we turn up the speed of this vibrator and make the frequency increase, well, a higher frequency means a smaller wavelength. So here's a shorter wavelength. In fact, the wave is short enough that we could see just a full wave. And here's an even shorter wavelength. This wave is so short, so small in length, that we can see one full cycle here and then another half cycle here. But how do standing waves really form? I mean, if I start this thing oscillating, the wave travels across. There's motion of these crests. They move to the right. It's not standing. It's not stationary. Well, let's watch a little longer. Look over at the right edge. A standing wave is forming, and it's forming and moving across the screen. So something happened to produce a standing wave. Let's watch again. Here's the initial wave. It travels to the right. And as it travels to the right, more waves are coming, also moving to the right. But then these reflect. And you can see that the reflection is what creates the standing wave. The reflection is moving across the screen, and you can see it. It's here, and now it's like here, making a standing wave, then it's here. Here's the standing wave. So the reflection travels across, creating this standing wave. And you can see it move across the string as the standing wave spreads. Let's watch that one more time. There's a wave traveling to the right. And then there's an identical reflection. When the two interfere, that's what makes the standing wave. Let's inspect that a little closer. We've said that standing waves are created when you have an oncoming wave, but also when you have a reflection, and they're traveling in opposite directions. Let's watch that. See the red? The red is moving to the right, and the blue is a reflection moving in the opposite direction. The green down below shows the resultant. When you add those waves together, the resultant is shown in green. And you can see. The green wave is a standing wave. So what did we just learn? A standing wave in green is nothing more than the resultant of two identical waves that go in opposite directions. Let's put this down in our notes. How is a standing wave produced? Standing waves are produced when an incoming wave, like the wave moving rightward, interferes with an identical reflection or reflected wave moving in the opposite direction that's the first big concept and there's a second big concept The standing wave is the resultant 
of two traveling waves. A standing wave, or we could say the standing wave, let's say. is the resultant of the two identical traveling waves. They're identical except they're moving in opposite directions. So we could say moving in opposite, moving in opposite <clears throat> directions.